Hey everybody, Mark Edward Lewis here with Cinema Sound. Today we're going to be looking at one of my favorite plugins for post production in Adobe Audition, and that is the Tube Modeled Compressor. Let's check it out. We're here in Adobe Audition, and if you've never used Adobe Audition, I invite you to come to Cinema Sound and stream the Adobe Audition 1, 2, 3. Uh, product that we have that will take you from, hey, I've never used Adobe Audition, to great results and having a lot of ease at this amazing program. So we're here just like in any old non-linear editor, and we've got clips in the timeline, we've got a gunshot and a couple of uh, on-set dialogue pieces. Let me show you, here's the gun, it's very loud. Boy, bang, and here's the dialogue. Did you come to check my vitals? Yes. How's my pulse? So it's obviously from set, there's fans whirring and all kinds of nonsense, and there's a big difference in volume from this loud volume, uh, loud dialogue, to these bits here. So we could use a fader to, you know, contour that, uh, automation, keyframes, but we want to try to do that automatically if we can, and possibly even help the sound itself. All right, so let's check this out. I can select, just like in Premiere Pro, clips and instantiate plugins by going to effects, or going to the effects rack here and clicking on clip effects and having up to 16 different plugins on any clip. But I don't wanna do that. I wanna actually apply this to the entire track, every clip on this track. So I click track effects, amplitude and compression, and my favorite tube modeled compressor. I love this thing so much. Um, the controls on this are very simple. It's one of the simplest uh, interfaces because you know it's just a down and dirty, this is what you need, not much more, not much less compressor, but they've done an excellent job of modeling what a beautiful sounding old time tube modeled tube compressor sounds like, that rich warm wonder. And a little bit of the distortion, the harmonic distortion, not the enharmonic distortion that we all love about those tube microphones. And hey, it's built in, it sounds amazing. So we have the threshold, output gain, Ratio attack release, and then this beautiful thing here, which I'll talk about in a second. Well, what is a threat? What is a compressor? Uh, we've talked about the single band compressor, the multi band compressor, de esser, all of these are ers, essers, uh, essers. But what it basically is, regardless of the model of compressor or type, you have a threshold, and as sound goes over it, the compressor brings that sound down to the ratio. If you have a two to one ratio, that means that for every decibel the sound goes over a threshold, it's halved like a fraction. A three to one ratio, it's thirded. A four to one, it's quartered. A 10 to one, it's 10th. That's really hard to say, 10th. So you kind of get it. So uh, all the way up to the point where you've got, you know, limiter. Well, limiter means, you know, nothing goes over that threshold. All right, so here's the threshold. We can easily turn this up and down and grab this happy thing. Uh, the output gain, since we are reducing uh, as a compressor, sometimes, uh, most of the time, we have to replace the overall volume, which we will in a second. There's that ratio I talked about. The attack here in milliseconds, as well as the release. Now this, unlike the single band compressor, shows you reduction in uh, how much it's reducing, which is very, very helpful. So here's the, uh, let's see here. Here's the gunshot. Turn this off for a second. Bang. Now let's, let's uh, just make a general reduction of the sound. Let's say we want to keep it under control. We're going to make the attack zero. We're going to make this release really fast. And we're going to make this ratio really strong at a one fifth. You can see the reduction happening. Oops. And you can see and hear the difference in the volume if I turn this off with this meter. Way up here, that's a minus three versus, what is that? A minus 16. So that's about the right math. Okay, so now what happens, that's with a zero attack, basically cutting off all of those initial transients, making it kind of nice and smooth. You can actually hear a lot more of that decay as opposed to where it was. That decay kind of falls off. But what happens if I allow the attack to breathe a little bit for say 40 milliseconds and maybe even the release? See what happens now. There's a punch, a snap to that attack because the attack is not, um, the, the slower attack is allowing the sound to come through and then only be compressed 50 milliseconds later. Let's make it even longer, like maybe 60 milliseconds. You got almost a low frequency punch in there, making it very, 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 very snappy. And if we allow the release to go for 250 milliseconds, 
versus, say, 30 milliseconds. It really fu uh, has a function on that delay, the decay in the canyon or wherever that is. Now let's apply this to the dialog. I'm going to make a much nicer setting, like a 2.5 to 1 with a 50 millisecond and a 100 millisecond release, and the threshold here should be okay. What we're trying to do is balance this loud dialog with the soft dialog here. Did you come to check my vitals? Yes. How's my pulse? And what we want to have happen is the loud dialog to get compressed and brought down while these softer ones are not. Let's see how we're doing if I bring this down a little bit more. Did you come to check my vitals? Yes. We probably need to bring it up in ratio and down in attack, about five milliseconds. Let's make this release 75 milliseconds. Did you come to check my vitals? Yes. And now let's bring up the output gain to make up for the reduction we've been doing. Did you come to check my vitals? Yes. How's my pulse? Now, what's interesting is that the, because the compression's hitting his loud bits much stronger, we can actually contour those, contour those much like we did with the, with the gun. So let's make this uh, like 50 milliseconds. And notice what happens, whoa, 50 milliseconds. And notice what happens to the punchiness. Did you come to check my vitals? As opposed to... Did you come to check my vitals? Back again. Did you come to check my vitals? You'll notice that it's the bup, 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 bup. there's a lot more punchiness, and you can use this kind of technique with compression to allow uh, maybe flubby or otherwise difficult to understand dialogue to become far more coherent. Now, what you're noticing already, however, is that the noise floor is very, very loud, and it's one of the reasons why we always want to do denoising more than we think if we can, because compression like this and in the mix, um, well, it really brings up that noise floor. If you found this video or any of the other hundreds of videos that we have here on the Cinema Sound channel uh, useful at all, please subscribe to the Cinema Sound channel and I invite you to come visit us at cinemasound.com uh, where hopefully in the hundreds and hundreds of blog posts and educational bits that we have there, you can get that Hollywood value that you've been looking for into your productions. Until then, we'll see you in post. Even if you're